Intelligence is our most important resource. Most problems in the world have some intelligent solution, if a solution is compatible with the laws of physics. Because of this, major companies and nations are spending an enormous amount of energy and capital doing research on artificial intelligence in order to find out how to maximize accessible intelligence. The fear is that we are collectively racing towards something that we do not fully understand. Electronic circuits function a million times faster than biochemical ones. So hypothetically, a machine could think about a million times faster than the minds that built it. Pope Francis has often called us to use our intelligence to take the time to reflect and understand the signs of the times. The problem is, what happens if the times we're living in start to become dictated by the invisible value pushes and disappearance of competing points of views by machines and other intelligent circuit-based entities that do not share our best interests? Given what's at stake, we spoke with Professor Paolo Soda from the Campus Biomedico University of Rome to better understand what future those working on AI see for our collective species. I understand the perception of risk that many people may have. It is like when there was the first industrial revolution. The advent of machines, like the steam engine, completely changed the ways of production and invented new paradigms. There have been several revolutions, and now we have arrived at the fourth industrial revolution. Here, artificial intelligence is the protagonist of this fourth industrial revolution. I believe that if humans are always at the center of this development, paying attention, we will not run this risk. It is useful to look at other industrial revolutions to compare what we're going through now with artificial intelligence, but it seems that the very essence of intelligence is being threatened to be outsourced and begs the question of what value is intellectual work. At the moment, we're in the field of narrow artificial intelligence. But what is narrow artificial intelligence exactly? Let us say, at this time, we are in the so-called narrow artificial intelligence. That is, artificial intelligence to solve a very specific problem. But to use the example of smartphones, we use facial recognition techniques or fingerprint recognition to unlock our devices. So this artificial intelligence is not able to solve general problems. We are still in the context of this research. Even when we see applications that are extremely striking to our imagination, such as those by Google or Amazon, they are still applications in a very specific context. The algorithms that are available today are capable of learning specific contexts, albeit with some breadth. Think of speech recognition, natural language processing. We are still in a specific domain. In a decade, we will probably go towards general artificial intelligence, situations where artificial intelligence will be able to harmonize together heterogeneous information from even different domains. And to focus on the big issues, we must have a stable bearing on our humanity and our history. Giacinto Baresi is a researcher in collaboration with the Campus Biomedico in Rome, who focuses on the relationship between the human and the robotic. We spoke to him about the digital era that's already enveloping us and the coming seductions and predicaments that await us all with the power and hypnotic prowess of future AI systems. How will we as humans orient ourselves in that kind of world? In many ways, we cannot think of the human being without the history, nor humanity as a whole, not the individual, without the history. This history has a past that needs to be remembered. It has a future that needs to be shaped according to the value that each of us has. So, principles that are based on morals, on morals that can be different with their certain limits, always on respecting the other, 
and always on making sure that you never do to others what you would not want done to yourself. It becomes a gut line. In fact, not a technical gut line, but a gut line. A principle that should be followed in setting up any of these technologies, because they are action potentials. We actually enter into someone's story, offering these possibilities. However, also trying to understand how these potentials could be used. So, it is as if we are introducing to someone else's stories what we make of these machines or these devices, the solution, an element that could be unpredictable. Un elemento che potrebbe essere imprevedibile. Ultimately, our safety and our sanity requires us to return to a better understanding of ourselves. As René Girard says, humanity is a child of religion. There lies our history and our understanding of ourselves. It will be necessary for us to keep balance during the coming technological changes.